Today's video is going to outline a scary reality of what could happen if you purchase a large item internationally and some of the risks involved. Because this AliExpress printer right here, it's called the Sapphire Pro from a company called Two Trees and it's available for 320 USD shipped worldwide. However, the one we had here did have a few problems. But the biggest thing that got me was the aftercare and the initial response I got, which makes all the difference if you're buying an item like this and you come into potential problems. However, before we do go into this unit and all the things wrong with it, or at least the problems I experienced, I will roll the original intro and you guys can see just how excited I was because the items included in the build quality did appear at first to be quite decent. But after that, of course, we'll get into the nitty gritty. Right here on the desk, we have a 3D printer from AliExpress. This is the Sapphire Pro 1. And this is coming from a seller that has two models. They've got the Sapphire Pro 2, which has the glass side panels. And they've got this one, which is just open. And so it'll 3D print right before your eyes. And uh, the seller actually contacted me and said, would you like to take a look at this? And I said to myself, definitely yes, as I've actually been in the market for a 3D printer and I was considering getting one from Audi, but they sold out of them quite a while ago. So what we're left with here is something that'll come in the mail and it's disassembled and it'll take about two hours at least to set up, or at least that's what it took me. And I had to use a guide from another YouTuber called Rui Raptor. And I'll put the link video in the description below because the instruction manuals were a little bit vague and they did leave out some crucial uh, points in putting this thing together, which after I watched the guide, everything made sense and then things went a bit smoother. Though I will say getting this cable in the included plastic that they put here was extremely difficult and took quite a while. So be prepared to have some patience when putting this thing together. Though what we've got now here is the finished product and I'm going to try and print out some things that I would use when I'm building a PC as well as some things that I could use on my desk like maybe a headphone stand or a mouse bungee and see if this thing can really help you and what critiques I have for it at its current price point because it's coming in at a really solid price point as we said before. 320 shipped internationally for a 3D printer with included filament is quite impressive though. Let's go through this review, start printing with it and see what the final verdict is. So coming back now to the Sapphire Pro and spending over a week with this thing, I am severely frustrated. And now I got two of my friends around who have their own 3D printers. They've got quite some experience in dealing with them and they basically helped me or did most of the work when it came to setting this thing up and also trying to diagnose the problems. In the end, it ended up being a roller bearing inside the unit itself that just gave out and it started chewing the filament as it was feeding it to the head. And actually the funny thing was with this head, the original filament here blocked up inside and that caused us a really bad problem initially where the error codes weren't translated to English. We had to find a guy from Russia who had spent a lot of time with this thing and then he translated the codes into Russian and then from there we kind of got an idea what was going on. So the first thing first with this unit, the instruction manual is poorly written and it's actually wrong in some places. For instance, they don't even tell you to put the pad down underneath the flat panel here, which is just completely missing. So my friends who have built 3D printers before know that that was something that needed to be done. And then after that, there was ambiguity in how you set things up. Controllers and the ports on where those plugs should go were all mislabeled and in some instances, they were just completely wrong. So basically you were left to figure things out yourself and thankfully there were some guides on these printers where people have got them and figured things out and they've posted tutorials. After we set everything up, this is where we came into problems because the included filament that they included was absolute garbage. And I mean, I usually don't use uh, words that sort of trash and bash things, but this stuff here was so brittle and it already blocked up the 3D printer to the point where it lasted a whole two minutes into the print and then it just crapped out. And then we tried fixing this thing up and we came into a mammoth of problems where we had to undo everything completely and then clean everything out and then start again. 
And then when we used a different filament, one of decent quality, we did manage to get a print out of this thing where it was uh, satisfactory. We got some cable combs because I wanted to show you guys some cool products you could 3D print for tech. However, we only got through one print and then the head again crapped out. And so after that, we knew we were in for a world of trouble, we will have to replace parts. And also the head did manage to slightly leak at times, even after we cleaned everything out and changed the filament, which my friends have now taken home because we've completely abandoned this 3D printer now. However, this is where things get even worse for this thing. And that's when I messaged the customer support, outlining all the issues which we're gonna go over besides the faulty parts. And their response was pretty much just to the likes of, please deal with it yourself. Now, this is a review unit that I'm doing for these guys as a review sample of AliExpress. I didn't pay for this. They sent me it and saying, look, check out our 3D printer. And since I am a big fan of AliExpress and buying parts off there, I said, sure thing, this could be a really good solution for a lot of people in the world. However, them not responding in a positive way and saying, hey, do it yourself, fix it yourself, is really terrible if someone gets a 3D printer and they've paid 320 US dollars for it and they get it and it's broken and this is how they deal with it. They're saying, hey, we're not gonna help you and our product's faulty. That to me is not good customer service. And so it's at this point right here and this is pretty much the main reason why I wouldn't be recommending this unit is that simple aftercare. If you're on a budget and you want to get a decent 3D printer and you bought this and it didn't work as intended, you essentially got hosed. And now I get it, there's parts that come through and they're faulty. Sometimes I sell a PC and a week later it might have a problem, but it's how you deal with it afterwards that makes all the difference. The fact that this company is not like, okay, these parts are faulty, we'll replace them for you, really bothers me, especially if someone's paying 320 USD and they're on a budget and they want to get a decent 3D printer and they get it and it doesn't work as intended. Though that aside, we're going to run through the list of other critiquing points and that is the auto level system. It only checks the left hand side front to back and it should be checking the left, right, front, back and center of the bed. Uh, the touch screen, we go through the Z plus and Z minuses, don't work unless you unplug the Z limit switch cable. Then there's the Z limit switch itself. It had a crack in it, so it couldn't tighten it at all. And then there's the filament. As we said before, it's brittle. It keeps snapping mid print. It gums up right before we get to the hot end. Though the only other issue besides that, and it wasn't a problem so much, it was just rather a noise of the uh, tray here moving up and down where it was letting off an ear piercing noise. And we fixed that by just simply greasing up the rod. So with all those critiquing points out of the way and my negative experience with this 3D printer, I will say that the build quality on it and most of the parts feel of really good quality. It does feel well made once you assemble it, though I would describe it quite simply as a gamble. And are you willing to take that gamble? Say for instance, if a 3D printer of similar, uh, I guess, class is available in your area for double the price, is that worth it, that gamble? Because if I got one of these things in the future and I knew more about 3D printers and I knew, for example, how to change a metal feed gear, which I don't, and I also knew how to completely make this head work 100% even after its episode with this bad filament, then I might give it a shot. So basically what I'm gonna be doing now with this 3D printer is sidelining it. And then when someone who I know comes along who knows how to fix all these things, I'll just pay them a little bit of money and we'll get this printer running 100%. Though as it stands with this unit, especially if you are new to the world of 3D printing, then I would quite simply avoid this unit. I don't think it's intended for your first 3D printer and I feel like it needs to uh, be handled by someone who knows how to mod them and knows a little bit more about 3D printing where they can get everything perfect from the get-go. Because what we got here is a unit that I feel needs to be fixed up and repaired and I don't know how to repair 3D printers. So I'm gonna sideline this thing until I know someone locally who can fix it up for me and then maybe I'll have a functioning 3D printer here in the Tech Yes Studio. So basically, in a nutshell, if you are a beginner, I would advise against this thing. If you're an expert and you feel like it's got value, even after all the faults, and if you got it, it had potential faults, and you're still willing to take the gamble, then by all means, be my guest. Though with that aside, we're gonna move on to the question of the day now, which comes from Spatic Burhol, and they ask, is spraying the equivalent of WD-40 
all over the computer a good thing. And the thing about the WD-40 is, I just call it that, I use a multi-purpose spray from Super Cheap Auto, it costs around $4 a can, and it's really good stuff. It gives the computer a new look shine, but also it does the uh, double job of cleaning parts a lot of the time. For instance, when I spray this on the socket, an LGA socket, I was able to clean off a bit of thermal paste in the process, and then even after I bent the pins back, because what happened with this uh, motherboard I got in is it wasn't booting properly, it was having problems, and then I bent a pin back, it was still having problems, but then I sprayed the uh, multi-purpose spray on there and cleaned the pins up, put the CPU in, and the board was working again. So that's what that can do. Not only can it make your products look better, but it can also bring products back from the brink and make them usable again. So I love this stuff. Though in terms of spraying it on live electronics, the formulas I've used in the past, both in Japan and Australia, haven't presented any problems. That's the CRC 556 and also WD-40 in Oz and also multi-purpose spray in Oz. Though that being said, I would advise against spraying it on live electronics. Though for me personally, I've only ever had win after win after win. There are no negatives at all with this multi-purpose spray, except of course the $4 a can, which one can last me a lot of different builds. Anyway guys, that's it for today's video of the AliExpress 3D printer. If you enjoyed this one, then be sure to hit that like button for us. If you have any questions or comments, then be sure to drop a comment in the comment section below. But also, if you've watched this far and you're enjoying the content and you're not yet subbed and you wanna see the content as soon as it drops, hit that sub button, ring that bell, and I'll catch you guys in another tech video very soon. Peace out for now, bye.